I'm an undergrad. I never met Richard Feynman. Yeah! it's <laughs> a lot of us here. I never met Richard Feynman. I haven't done any groundbreaking research. Why am I here? <laughs> because I can tell you firsthand about the value of extraordinary teaching and extraordinary mentorship and what it can really mean to someone. All right, I've always been kind of an obsessive planner, so even as a second year chemistry major, I already had everything figured out. Hands down, I wanted to do organic synthesis. I wanted to do organic synthesis so I could get a really great industry job because I absolutely did not want to become a prof. I didn't, yeah, well, it's true. I didn't know exactly why, I just didn't. About a year ago, pretty much today, I got really homesick, like super homesick. So I walked into my advisor's office to talk to him about doing summer research at home in Louisiana. Now, my advisor is Harry Gray, so I didn't want to sound too presumptuous when I walked in. So instead of telling him the truth, which I'm assuming he doesn't know to this day, which is that I had already contacted an organic professor at LSU, I instead said, um, Harry, you know, would you know anybody maybe who might be able to take me? <laughs> well, of course he did. <laughs> so he dials up the department chair, who, like him, is an inorganic chemist, and you know, picks up the phone, he goes, Andy, it's your old boss, Harry. <laughs> Look, man, I got this student, I got this student, she's just foaming at the mouth for chemistry. You gotta take her. Okay, great, great. I'll have her email you, bye. Done, like that, no questions asked, done. <laughs> And I finally managed to stammer out, but, but, but Harry, <laughs> I don't know the first thing about inorganic chemistry. And he looks at me, and he grins, and he says, you don't know? Don't worry about it. <laughs> so that's how I ended up studying supermolecular chemistry at the Maverick Lab last June. This lab was tiny. <laughs> one grad student, one postdoc, the professor, and me. And I have never met a professor like Andy Maverick. He essentially walked me into the lab and said, go play. And I did. And I learned that inorganic reactions are absolutely spectacular. Like, since when do pink and yellow make purple? <laughs> it amazed me. And the way his students would talk about transition metals personifying copper and palladium as temperamental and fussy, chemistry was getting really dramatic. <laughs> I got even more excited this one day. We're having group meeting at this pole boy joint right off of campus, another benefit to going home for surf. And the professor, he picks up this napkin, right? And he's really excited. And he says, look, guys, I, uh, I just couldn't sleep last night. I started thinking about these steric effects in this one complex of ours. And he holds the napkin up at the table, and he's twisting it and folding it and rotating it, trying to explain what he's talking about. And the three of us are looking on, like, absolutely immersed in what he's doing. And I look out of the corner of my eye, and the waitress is staring at us like we are the biggest bunch of nut jobs she has seen in her life. I tune back in just in time to hear Andy say, oh, but then I realized it shouldn't be a problem, and, you know, I went back to sleep. And suddenly, chemistry wasn't just like a series of lectures anymore, right? It was something a lot more powerful. It was something powerful enough to keep Andy Maverick up at night and powerful enough to turn me into some kind of napkin-worshipping nut job. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't top the best day of the summer, like the best day, okay? We're nine weeks into the project, and any general chemical reaction, you got A plus B equals C, right? Well, you gotta make A and B first. So I'm nine out of 10 weeks into the project and I haven't gotten either of them. I'm working in the hood this one day when A finally pops out a solution, like finally, and I'm working to purify it when the grad student pops up in my periphery and he's grinning. And he's got this sheet from the crystallographer. I finally found a good candidate for B, like all in one day. I'm so excited that I rush down to Dr. Maverick's office, I see his secretary and I say, look, um, is the professor available for a high five? <laughs> and she relays a message and says, yeah, go in. And there's Dr. Maverick, who's like well over six feet tall, and he's standing on top of his office chair like this. <laughs> and I say, what are you doing? And he says, I wanted to give you a really high high five. <laughs> I have never felt prouder in my life. 
And now here I am, a ruthenium toting inorganic chemist. And when I look at my professors like Andy, like Harry, when we think of everything we've heard about Richard Feynman today, I think to myself, I want to be that. <laughs> so that's what happened. Thank you. Thank you.